Okay, um, we're going to talk about different sampling methods. Um, and the first one is called a random sample. So I'm collecting um, values or collecting data in such a way that I'm creating a random sampling. So I'm doing a random sample. So I'm doing a random sample method. So um, in that case, every um, item has an equal chance of being selected. So what that means is that, um, for example, um, I take all the names of, of my students. So I'm going to take all the names of my students and put them in a hat, close my eyes, and choose one name. That means that everybody in that hat, right, everybody's name in that hat has an equal chance of being selected. And then I'm going to randomly do that over and over again to collect, let's say, 10 names in total. So those 10 names that I collect, I created a random sample. Simple random sample. Um, for a simple random sample, um, it's similar to a random sample, but now um, a sample of n subjects or items is selected. So that every sample of the same size n has an equal chance of being selected. n is just a number, right? n is a variable that represents a number. So let's say I have um, student names and a hat. Again, it's just a very simple example. Um, but now, when I close my eyes, I'm going to choose, let's say, three names. Now, I could choose any three names. And I'm going to take those three names and add them to my sample. Then I'm going to go back and choose another set of three names, add them to my sample. And so, therefore, um, N in that example would be three. And um, every sample of three names has an equal chance of being selected. So um, simple random sampling is very, very similar to random sampling, but the difference is instead of selecting one, I'm selecting more than one. Um, systematic sample. If I want to create a systematic sample, then I would um, select a starting point and select every case subject or item, every case. So, all right, select the starting point and then select OK in this example is also a variable that represents a number, a whole number. And let's say that I go into my classroom and I start with, um, so in my classroom, I select um, every fifth person. So every fifth person. So in this case, you know, K is five. So in my classroom, I'm selecting every fifth person. K is five, so I count one, two, three, four, five. That person comes with me. One, two, three, four, five. That person comes with me, and I continue until I select however many people I want in my systematic sample. A convenience sample is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, data is very easy to get. So I'm going to, let's say I need a statistics uh, a sample of statistics students uh, and I select my class. Well there you go, I have a sample of statistics students. It was very convenient for me to sample that. I just looked at you guys and I was like, hey, you come into my sample and that was it. Very convenient. Now, obviously not every single one of these sampling methods is ideal. Convenient sample is a horrible way of sampling. That sample Let's say I want to um, conduct a test on statistics students in general, and I just go to my class and I'm like, yo, you guys are my sample. Are you really a good representation of the population of all statistics students? Probably not. Most likely not. Therefore, my sampling method sucks. My data that I collect from that really doesn't mean anything. The values that I calculate, whatever I'm doing with that set of data does not mean anything. So, you know, you hear a lot of statistics in, in school. Um, you know, you hear a lot of statistics out there, you know, this percentage of people feel this way or whatever. Um, 
you got to ask how did you collect your data where what was your definition of your population how did you select the sample you know you have to know details about how they collected their data um, what their population was, and then how they calculated their values, because otherwise what they're saying doesn't really mean anything. So you have to be very careful about, um, you know, what kind of statistics you listen to. Um, a stratified sample. Sorry, a strat. Yeah. Sorry, stratified. Ooh, there we go sample. Um, so I'm going to divide the population, whatever it might be, into groups that share similar characteristics. Characteristics. Um, then randomly select from there. So let's say that I uh, divide my class into males and females. Then select from there. So I divided my class into two groups that share similar characteristics. Males share similar characteristics, females share similar characteristics. And then I select from there, you know, then I go and um, pick from there to collect data from my sample. Um, so I'm creating a stratified sample. Oops, gotta have an S for sample. Okay. Last um, sampling method that we're going to talk about is a cluster sample and you know you don't you don't want to confuse stratified sample with cluster sample because they could be confusing um, there's one main difference you're technically dividing the population uh, into groups they don't necessarily have to share similar characteristics though um, and we'll call those groups clusters um, then you randomly select uh, some of those clusters but everyone in the cluster goes into the sample. So um, let's say I divide my class into uh, groups of three. Then I randomly select some of those groups of three. And then if, obviously if I select this group of three, everybody in that group of three, those three individuals are coming with me into my sample. So these are different sampling methods. We'll do more examples of them. But these are different sampling methods. Obviously the best one or two, and you're going to see the most often in this class, are the random sample and the simple random sample.